as we transition the EVs, there is one constant and that is you have to plug in your EV. Well, that's actually changing thanks to the SAE J2954 wireless charging for light vehicle standard. To learn more about this, we head out to Palm Springs, California to talk to Jesse Snyder, who is the chair of the SAE Wireless Power Transfer Task Force. I am the CEO, CTO of a company called Zev Station. Uh, and my role at SAE is the chair of the Wireless Power Transfer Task Force. Wireless charging, what is it? Mm -hmm. uh, and essentially it's uh, a power transfer over an air gap, about 10 inches. Mm -hmm. And the idea is um, you have uh, a primary coil in, in a ground assembly and you have a, a vehicle assembly with a secondary coil, essentially a sender and receiver. Um, when it's coupled with a, with a capacitor, it's called um, inductive resonance. And what's really interesting about this is you can get very high efficiency charging upwards of 93% and above uh, with wireless power transfer. And, um, it's very safe. There's also object detection. There's foreign object detection. There's metal object detection to shut things off if anything would get in between. To see wireless charging alignment in action, I'm here in Stuttgart, Germany at Male headquarters, where I'm going to drive this smart car onto the pad. I'm here with Mike Boltekheimer. We are in the smart EV with the wireless charging setup. Uh, tell me uh, what we are, what are we about to do? Uh, over here, we have this car equipped with a wireless charging system and uh, you have the full wireless charging experience. This means 99% uh, of the experience is the alignment system. That is what you see in the car. Mm -hmm. And when you have uh, aligned the car properly, then charging process starts automatically. Cool. And, and how it'll charge up to 11 kilowatts? Exactly. Which yeah. is pretty, that's faster than my home charger right yeah. now, actually. So you can freely choose the spot, choose what you want. Right. And when you come closer, then you see on the display, you're very good now, a little to the right maybe, just a little and move forward until the rectangle gets smaller. And then you are perfectly aligned in the tolerance zone with the green light. You see over here, parking lot three, parking lot three. This means you have the connection with the correct ground assembly. Mm -hmm. And uh, now the charging process starts. And it's been tested. You know, we tried it out in Idaho National Laboratory, TDK National Laboratory, and also together with the FDA, we've mm -hmm. actually done testing with live pacemakers, uh, certainly wow. in a laboratory environment. Mm -hmm. So we, we're very confident it's uh, efficient, it's safe. Um, and with this new standard coming out, we believe it's ready for prime time. So we've actually found the uh, the consensus between the industry, between the, the ground uh, assembly, you know, the, the manufacturers of, of the chargers on the ground and, and the automakers, it took a number of years, a number of years of testing. And now we have a, a really reliable way of aligning the vehicle, aligning the vehicle to be on top of the pads at all times. And uh, that's really exciting for wireless charging. We also think it's a step forward also for autonomous vehicles mm -hmm. to be able to use that um, additional sensing to, to, to bring the vehicle to the right parking spot. It does so reliably, which means that you can have a fleet of automated uh, taxis that, ha that know where the spot is, know which spot is open. It has a new type of alignment. It's called Differential Inductive Positioning System, DIPS for short. Mm -hmm. uh, and this, this new system, um, it's basically an auxiliary small coil that um, through inductance, uh, you're able to triangulate and find a parking spot. Every time it parks, it charges. That means that that's one less thing to do. Roadside parking, um, you have to tear up the road mm -hmm. to do that, or you have to have a pole, as you mentioned. Whereas what we're talking about can be above ground um, and can be mounted certainly uh, on roadside parking uh, relatively easily. The, the biggest issue is weather. You know, mm -hmm. when there's ice and snow and things like that, while in an ideal world, these charging pads will be clear of all obstacles at all times, the reality is the real world is difficult. The real world is chaos. Let's say you live in New England where there are leaves everywhere during the fall. You have wet, slimy leaves. You can have them on the charging pad, no problem. Or if you live somewhere where it's cold and it snows or you just get sleet and ice on the road, 
Also, not an issue. Both of these charging pads will still align with the system and charge. I'm here with Timur Lamle from Male. So we're standing next to a vehicle that's parked over ice and the ice is between the wireless charging unit and the vehicle and it can still wirelessly charge, even though traditionally when you think electricity and water, those don't work out so great, but it works. Meanwhile, we're standing next to a big pile of leaves, the same issue, it's gonna work, no problem. Tell me how that can work, even though there's this large air gap, but my phone, I have to slap it right on top of the, uh, that yeah. charger in my car. How does this work? Yeah, so the systems for the mobile phones are designed specially for small air gaps, so mm -hmm. lying directly on the pad. But a uh, wireless charging system can also be designed for uh, like in the car with a ground clearance. So it is not an issue for a magnetic field procedure. And that was the reason why we also choose a magnetic field procedure for the alignment, because it's completely robust against such environmental conditions like ice or wet leaves. When we come to a parking space with wireless charging, we have these components. Parking sign, the ground pad installed on the floor. And now let's have a look inside to the interior of this pad. So we have here the example GA from the SAE J2954. For the alignment, we have a horizontal field coil wounded around the ferrite and the Litz wire, which generates a magnetic field in driving direction. And we have four vertical field coils, which generates a magnetic field above the pad to have the precise alignment inside the tolerance zone from the car to the ground pad. So this cross over here is the sensor which evaluates the alignment magnetic fields which come from the ground assembly, that the driver has an information about proper aligning the vehicle. In the car, it is installed in this way. The vehicle approaches and then there's the perfect alignment situation in the end. We have this uh, vehicle assembly, ground assembly, primary, secondary, with a coupling capacitor. Um, and, uh, and this capacitor um, tunes into a frequency. Mm -hmm. We've cho chosen a frequency uh, band of 85 kilohertz. And that allows for it, you can actually tune it to, to a height. And we believe that, um, that with that, we have a high, it's what's called coupling factor, which means very high efficiency. We've seen efficiencies um, very consistently above 93% towards 95 and up. Mm -hmm. And even, and the, the thing is that a magnetic field doesn't really see snow and ice. <laughs> it goes right through it. So everything we saw in the smart EV uh, would work in say, uh, like a, like a RAV4 or an EV9, you know, the key exactly, EV9, yes. which is a very, t you know, it's a tall vehicle. This is one of the basic principles over here that uh, we make a platform development which works for all kinds of vehicles, all ground clearances. If you have volume cars, if we have premium cars, if you have middle class cars. So this is very important for the industry uh, and for the automotive industry. Uh, to make the development low cost with a platform development mm -hmm. and then it works with all cars that you don't do not uh, need to pick uh, oh I, I can only use it in one <laughs> but this is what is not wanted in the automotive industry we want mm -hmm. to, to cover all the all the kind all kinds of vehicles so it's not just you and Timor who are working on this wireless charging system correct that's correct we have a whole team uh, behind of the system development uh, which you can see over here and our team is very, working very closely together with the SAE J2954 task force and together with them we got that standard done. Um, there are some companies which are looking at exclusively parking lots and parking structures to, to commercialize wireless charging. There are a number of automakers that are waiting um, in, to, to commercialize this. You probably heard in December Tesla made an announcement on the Cybertruck. Mm -hmm. Um, and Cry or Stellantis made an announcement as well. So I'm certainly, uh, there's an op opportunity for many automakers and suppliers to commercialize this. Right now it's unidirectional. Mm -hmm. uh, I will say that the, the next frontier for us is v view to grid. Mm -hmm. that's, that's something that's coming in another year or so, but we've already proven it. In fact, there's some data reports that we're referencing in a standard regarding vehicle to grid. And what's, what's exciting about that is that you can imagine how do you guarantee if you're talking about a society like in California there's going to be a mandate yeah. that you have to do vehicle to grid? Um, well, how do you, besides a conductive charging that you, you have 
in a parking lot, how do you how do you guarantee at nighttime that, that people who have a garage and have a charger actually plug in? Mm -hmm. And the answer is you won't. Um, so, but with wireless charging, if there's always sort of a, a spot where they're where they're always driving over consistently, that enables the potential to increase the vehicle to grid capability of uh, of all these electric vehicles. Yeah. So that's another door to open. There's one standard worldwide. So J2054 has worked together with ISO uh, and, and other, we've talked directly with GB in, mm -hmm. in China, with the intention of making you know, harmonization a priority externally from standardization, but also in, inside the United States, whatever ground assembly that you buy, it's mm -hmm. forwards compatible. The, the intention is one ground assembly for all, for all vehicle makes. We're actually developing it all the way up to 500 kilowatts. So there's a, there's a guideline out that we published last year as well. SA2954-2 is for heavy duty and SA2954 um, by itself is light duty. Um, and we're planning another document that's gonna be published another year for, for dynamic power, uh, wireless power transfer, uh, SA2954-3. And we think that the customers will, in the beginning, it may cost a little more, but we're seeing at least the, the prognosis that over with with the right volume, these actually will be on par or less than conductive charge. 2054 for us is is the this current standard really is the starting gate uh, of of the commercialization for electric vehicle wireless charging. So that's why we, we we're happy to yeah. talk about it today. In order for the system to work, automakers will have to add that element to their vehicles. But considering how it'll reduce the friction of charging, especially for fleet vehicles, don't be too surprised to see it in the near future. For more coverage of EVs, sustainability, batteries, and charging, be sure to subscribe to SAE International.